teacher certification course. My name is William. Glad you all tuned in this evening. Uh, if you don't have a book, we're in the uh, acceptance unit, the junior high acceptance unit. You can download the unit by going up to the top of the Facebook page there, Official Peaceful Solution Facebook page, and clicking on, I believe there's a manual that says character. If you hit the drop down button, the drop down menu, you can click on the acceptance unit teacher's manual and you can read along with us. We're gonna we're in chapter six entitled Reach for Your Goals. Uh, we're gonna be on page 112 tonight. What's the difference? But uh, before we do that, as we always do in the Peaceful Solution, we're going to do a little bit of a review of the last class, and then we'll continue on our reading on page 112 of the negative goals that I left off on last time. Um, if you recall in the last class, we were talking about the difference between positive goals and negative goals. And on page 112 at the top, it says, although there are many types of goals, most goals can be categorized as either positive or negative. A moral positive goal is beneficial for yourself and others. In other words, it's going to do something to help build your character, and it's going to help strengthen other people's character as well. It's not going to bring them any harm in any way. It's going to be of value to their life. It's going to add value to someone's existence. Now, a moral positive goal is beneficial for yourself and others. It strengthens and motivates you to succeed and will build moral character. Now, negative immoral goal, which we're going to be talking about uh, a little more in depth here in just a moment, is not advantageous, healthy, or beneficial. In other words, it could cause sickness, disease. Remember that word disease we went over? A few classes ago it's going to bring some kind of dis-ease into our life whether it's physical or mental and not only ourselves but other people's as well as we'll see later on tonight when we talk a little bit about the birth defects now a negative immoral goal is not advantageous healthy or beneficial if it is achieved it could result in harm to yourself or others what I want to do uh, real quickly is go back to page Lesson plan six, page D. Um, we're going to look at number four, but we're not going to read the whole thing. We're going to drop down to the bottom to kind of look at what we're going we're gonna to be looking at here tonight. At the bottom, it says, uh, use self-control. Have students turn to the section entitled, use self-control and morality when setting goals. Found on page 113 and 114 in their handbooks. Uh, we're, we've already we're already covering page 112 now, which is part of this uh, this actual step here. But I've already read that. Um, we're going to also be looking at page 113 and 14 about self control and morality when setting goals, and instruct students to read the articles and then answer the questions that follow, and discuss the illustration found on page 115 and the consequences of each of the goals shown. So that's where we're at now on page 112, and we'll be going into 113 and 114 here in just a moment. But let's go ahead and just recap a little bit here about the positive goals. Um, positive goals, uh, on page 112 it says, positive, honest, moral goals will help you to be a better person, okay? Uh, they will support your choice to develop a moral character. And it gave the example that Randy wants a great gra grade on his math, and wanting to earn it honestly, he studied and got an A. And then positive, honest, moral goals cause no harm and have no negative effects to yourself or others. And it gave the example that John is tired of being picked on by the school bully, and he plans to find a peaceful way to handle the problem by speaking to his parents and guidance counselors. And then the last positive goal, the example given is positive, honest, moral goals will help you achieve your purpose. Remember about on page 87, we discuss what purpose is. You know, your purpose, in fact, let's go ahead and just turn back there just real quick. Purpose on page 87 is defined as to have a positive direction in which to grow and mature. Key is positive. Remember, positive means something that's going to be advantageous to others and yourself, something that's going to bring added value to our world. Okay? Um, so your purpose has to be something that's positive, you know, because 
if it's something that's negative, of course, it's going to, you know, we, we've already got plenty of negative things going on in the world right now. That's why we need the peaceful solution so badly. Um, we don't need to be adding to it by, by uh, you know, having the, a goal like being, uh, you know, the top drug distributor in, in your neighborhood or, you know, uh, uh, such goals as that. They're going to bring harm to yourself and someone else. And it says uh, back on page 112 that positive, honest, moral goals will help you achieve your purpose. And it gave the example that Valerie's purpose is to help others. Her goal is to become a nurse. So let's look at the other side of the coin here on negative goals. Okay. And it says negative goals, negative and moral goals will compromise your choice to have an honest moral character and be a better person. And as I said in the last class, everybody's goal Really, the greatest goal any of us should have is to build a positive character and become the best person we can be because really in the end um, of our life, you know, uh, heaven forbid that takes place, but it, it does. Uh, the only thing we're going to be remembered by is really how we treated others and how we handled situations and how we and how we treated ourselves. You know, our character is what we're going to take that people it's what people are going to remember us for is our character what kind of person were we so it says um negative and moral goals will compromise your choice to have an honest moral character and be a better person and the example is that 12 year old michelle is determined to experiment by, with drugs by the time she's 13 um that's she don't have to wait long she's only got one more year but i know i was already experimenting with the drugs when i was about 11 um, I didn't have to wait till I was 13. Um, I don't think that it was a goal that I set. I think it was just something that took place. Um, uh, uh, I saw other people using some drugs, or I saw some people getting drunk, and I and I asked if I could join them, some younger people. And that's how I was kind of introduced to the drinking and the drugs, was just, you know, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, so to speak. Um but nonetheless, that kind of goal will not help you to develop the positive moral character that the peaceful solution seeks to instill in all of us. The second negative goal, it says negative and moral goals cause harm and have negative effect on others. So it says John is tired of being picked on by the school bully, and he plans to retaliate by bringing a weapon to school. You know, unlike John right across the page there in positive, honest goals, cause no harm uh, John is going to choose the wrong way which is going to lead to you know retaliation always leads to more retaliation but it also leads to negative consequences because if John uh, brings a weapon to school whether a gun or a knife whether he uses it or not um, you know if he's caught with that weapon uh, you know he's going to be suspended for a long long time if he's ever allowed to come back to the school at all. They take that very seriously, you know, bringing any kind of weapons into a school, even by a school within 100 yards or 200 yards of a school, bringing any kind of weapons uh, can be a really, really bad deal for, for John here. But this, what if he does retaliate? What if he actually uses the weapon? You know, uh, somebody gets seriously hurt somebody could get killed innocent bystanders could get killed it, it might not just be the one that he's trying to get even with that he's seeking to get revenge on because a lot of these school shootings as you know a lot of innocent people get caught up in the crossfire and it affects a lot of people's lives you know emotionally psychologically to have to live through a school shooting if they live through it at all um so this is not the right way you know that it's, it's a negative goal when you when you choose to do something that could bring harm to somebody uh, by retaliating. And then the third one says negative and moral goals can prevent you from achieving your purpose. The example is Landon's purpose is to become rich one day. His goal is to sell drugs. Now, would it necessarily be wrong to want to earn a lot of money and have a lot of money in the bank? No, there's nothing wrong with that. But there is something wrong if you choose to do it, enrich yourself by bringing harm to someone else or yourself. 
you know, by selling drugs, uh, by engaging in any kind of activity, robbing banks, <laughs> counterfeiting money, or whatever else you might decide to do to get rich. It's not, it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to prevent you from achieving your purpose because if your purpose is to become a better person or your purpose is to help others, etc., and you do things like this, you'll never reach that. You'll, you'll never realize that purpose. You'll be rotting in a jail cell, a uh, prison cell, or you might even end up dead and, and you'll never realize, you know, and, and your life, our life, everyone's life has purpose, um, but it needs to be positive purpose. We need to set positive goals, whether short or long term, and they need to be positive. They need to, your purpose should be to serve others, to help others, to become the best person you can be and to lead others in that same direction so they too can have a great life. Now you remember, well, let's go ahead and go to page 113 at the top. These are just, uh, we just went over the examples of positive goals and negative goals on page 112. We'll go on to page 113 here. It says, use self-control and morality when setting goals. I turn over to page 157 in your book real quick, and we'll look at what self-control is. According to the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, look at page 157 and number 9. It says, self-control is not yielding to impulsive thoughts and actions. Now, that word impulsive, I believe, uh, back in the character unit, uh, we went over that word impulsive pretty extensively. But for the newcomers here and for even us that might have forgotten, that word impulsive, you know, when you ask most people what the word impulsive means, they usually will say something like, well, I did something without thinking about it first. I just did it without thinking. But the truth is, you're always thinking. You know, I remember when I used to do things that were negative, whether it was stealing, and I'll use stealing as an example. If I was stealing something, I was thinking, like if I was shoplifting, I was thinking, if you know, was anybody watching me? Um, I was thinking about what I was going to do with the item when I got it home. I was thinking about how wonderful it was that it was going to be free. <laughs> I didn't have to pay anything for I was thinking. But as we learn in the Peaceful Solution, Impulsive thoughts, impulsive means not thinking about the consequences of what we're getting ready to do, not carefully considering the outcome of what we're getting ready to do. The end result, as we learned in the last class, not looking at the end result of our actions. And it says, for example, you saw your sister's letter on her dresser and you really wanted to read it. But because you chose to respect your privacy, you decide not to touch it. Notice, it, it, it started in the mind. Now, the thought came because of the environment. She saw a letter sitting there on the table. And, but then the thought came into her mind, the letter sitting on the table and no one else around, stimulated this thought in her mind that, hey, I'd like to read that, you know, and see what's going on with my sister. But the self-control kicked in, thankfully, and she considered you know, well, you know, she might have even considered, I wouldn't want anybody to do that to me, so I'm going to go ahead and respect my sister's privacy, even though I would like to read the letter, and she decided not to do it, and decided not to even touch it, because even if she had touched it, and not read it, did she, did she have permission to touch it? No. So, when we touch things without permission, as we learn in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, we're actually stealing when we touch things without asking first. So let's go back now to page 113, now that we've defined self-control. Self-control, it says, use self-control and morality when setting goals. And remember, we went over morality on page 8 last time. You know, moral means, morals are rules that if followed, they don't bring harm to anyone. They're just, you know, for everyone. They're fair to everyone. They don't bring harm to anybody, yourself, the environment, etc., so it says, to determine if your goals are positive, moral, and honest, or, or negative, immoral, and dishonest, think carefully about the outcome or end result. Now, you remember last class, we talked about, you know, the goal that America and its allies set in World War II of ending the war, okay? 
and how they purpose to achieve that goal or how they plan to achieve that goal was to make a weapon that was so destructive that it would strike such fear in their enemies and do such damage that their enemies would never choose to rise up against them again and that would end all the wars. There'd be no more wars since they had the biggest weapon. Of course, that didn't work out too well as we learn. Uh, you know, they, they, they wanted to have peace but now, um, let me show you what we've created. I told you what we created last class when I told you that, uh, you know, now uh, the, the, the secret got out just a few months after they made the weapon and the Russians were given the secrets and the Russians developed their own weapon. So now, you know, there's this big race to try to keep all the nations from getting these nuclear weapons. So the goal didn't quite end the way they would like it to. Of course, you know, now there's a lot of people that uh, are kind of glad they got these weapons because there's a lot of money to be made. Can you show the slide that I've got here? It's called now, we refer to it as a radioactive golden calf. There's money, money, money to be made in the nuclear armaments industry. Okay, now, uh, in fact, I showed a picture last class. I showed a picture of Israel Hawkins. You can leave this picture up uh, while I'm talking. I showed a picture of uh, the author of The Peaceful Solution, Israel Hawkins, at the United Nations. Remember, and I talked about how the Peaceful Solution's goal is to bring peace through education, you know, to stop all wars uh, with the three steps I went over in the last class. You know, there is a way to end the wars, but it's not through armaments. It's not through uh, through force. It's not through bombs and guns and weapons of any kind. Not even your hands strangling somebody. You don't, no kind of force is necessary to bring peace. Peace can come through education. But when Israel Hawkins was at the United Nations, he spoke to the, the Secretary General there about uh, the nuclear armaments industry and Israel Hawkins, you know, told him all about the goals of the peaceful solution and how, you know, the peaceful solution wanted to end the wars through education. And, and the man told him, you know, his name was Bawa Jay, and he told him, he said, he said, this is an $800 billion a year industry, you know, this nuclear weapons, uh, radioactive golden calf. It's making a lot of money for a lot of people. And he says, you're never going to be able to do this. There's just too much money involved here. Well, that didn't stop Israel Hawkins. You know, he, he, he's still teaching. He still continued to teach this piece. And he, we're still teaching the peaceful solution because we know that even though right now, a lot, of, a lot of people just aren't thinking about the end result of the nuclear weapons industry. They're not thinking about when those bombs are finally used. You know, that their money is going to be worthless, that all the money that they're making right now off these bombs is going to be worthless because there will be nowhere to spend it. OK, um, there will be nowhere to spend it. There'll no there'll be no earth left uh, to enjoy their money. Now, they're not thinking about this, this, this end result. OK, and uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and go back to the reading here. It says, uh, if you were to achieve your goal, how could it affect you and those around you? Keep in mind that the ability to stop, think, and weigh the consequences of your actions is called self-control. Like we saw the girl there about her sister's letter. You know, she stopped. You know, she, she put her emotions or her thoughts in check there. Okay? And she considered what she needed to do in that situation, what she should or shouldn't do. She thought about the end result of what she was getting ready to do, and she decided not to touch her sister's letter. That's called self-control, when we can do this, when we can stop and think before we do things, you know, instead of acting impulsively and then having the regrets later. You know, it's, you know what they say in the Peaceful Solution, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? It's easy to look back on something that we did or said, and we can see so clearly afterwards how we should have handled that situation or what we should have said, how we should have behaved. We can see it so clearly afterwards. 
but we're in the middle of something when we're in the heat of the moment we don't think so clearly sometimes because we haven't been trained to do so yet and all logic goes out the window and then we act on impulse without thinking of the consequences and the end result and then we have nothing but regrets later okay and that's what the peaceful solution is trying to help us to to lose is regrets you know um we shouldn't have to look back with regret we should always look we should be able to look back and say man i'm so glad i made the right choice in that situation you know but never looking back and thinking man i should have done it this way i should have done it differently so i didn't bring harm to myself or someone else someone else now i'm sitting in this filthy hole four walls a toilet and no place to roam my new home right this is this is what it can end up being okay and you know usually when we're in a situation like that you know we blame everybody else but our own self you know it was the judge's fault it was the police officer's fault because he arrested me uh, it was my mom's fault because she didn't give me that chocolate ice cream when i was eight years old when i asked for it or whatever else we can blame right my dad was an alcoholic, so I'm an alcoholic, or whatever excuse we come up with. You know, we, we need to start learning to put all these things, we need to start taking responsibility for our own choices, for our own thoughts, for our own feelings, for our own actions. And the peaceful solution is showing us how to do it right here. It's, it's that ability to stop, think, and weigh the consequences of your actions before you act, before you speak. And if we can do that, we're going to have a lot less regrets. It says, valuing your life and possessions and that of others is the basis of moral and ethical principles. You know, uh, it's, it's treating others with the same consideration, care, and concern that you want shown to yourself. I remember the peaceful solution in a, in a certain place in the peaceful solution. It says that, you know, if you're ever in doubt, as to what to do or how to act or what to say always think well how would i want someone to act toward me how would i want someone to say this to me how would i want this done to me okay because nobody likes to be disrespected nobody likes to be stolen from nobody likes to be taken advantage of nobody likes those things okay and if they don't like them neither do uh neither do we I just realized that thing was hanging on my ear. Okay. Self-control and morality are the foundation of all positive goals. <clears throat> in fact, in fact, self-control is the foundation of, of every moral act, every right choice. It's the foundation because without self-control, you're not, you're not going to stop and think of the consequences or you're not going to stop and think of the outcome or the end result, as it says here in that first paragraph. Self-control and morality. Remember that morality, that, that right actions, actions that don't bring harm to yourself or anyone else. They're the foundation. They're the, they're the, the ground floor of all positive goals. Without them, you can't achieve a positive goal because moral means positive, Okay. And if there's no morality or there's a lack of morality or there's something done that's immoral in any way in your quest to achieve your goals along the way, if there's something that's done immoral to reach that goal, it won't be a positive outcome. It can't be. Okay. It has to be based on self-control, stopping and thinking, and also the morality, you know, the treating others the way uh, with the same consideration, care, and concern you want to be treated with, with the respect, with the honesty, etc. People who stop, think, and set morally positive goals demonstrate respect for themselves and others. Setting positive goals will allow them to lead a life that is fulfilling and rewarding. These people are also examples and role models to those around them. On the other hand, goals that are made impulsively and because of emotions such as hate, anger, revenge, or jealousy can result in harm to oneself and to others. Let's read that again because, and, and this should strike, I'm going to go back to the last class again. It should strike the thought in your mind about the goal that the United States and its allies 
had to end the war. Remember, this goal that they set was made impulsively because they didn't think about the end result of building these nuclear weapons. Okay? First of all, they didn't even think of the short-term effect of building an atomic weapon because the atomic weapon was kind of a baby compared to the teenage and adult nuclear weapons, which are hundreds of times more powerful than the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. These nuclear weapons now are a thousand or hundreds and thousands of times more powerful than those bombs. So, and they became much more powerful in a very short period of time. The hydrogen bomb, I think, was exploded the first one in what, 1951? Something like that? 1951, just six short years later, a hydrogen bomb. A hydrogen bomb is, is much more, it's megatons. You know, that's millions of tons, the equivalent of millions of tons of TNT, dynamite, which reminds me, you know, the man that invented dynamite actually won the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> actually, the Nobel Peace Prize was named after him, wasn't it? Yeah, Noble, Alfred Noble. The Nobel Peace Prize was named after a man that invented dy dynamite. If that's not irony, I don't know what it is. Um Certainly the dynamite hasn't helped bring peace. I can tell you that right now. Um, it never will using explosives. Um, <laughs> that won't bring peace as we're talking about. But, you know, this, this goal that they set, this goal that they set was made impulsively. And it was made because of, they wanted revenge. <laughs> they wanted to revenge on their enemy. Could, could there have been a positive outcome with that kind of goal in mind? Could there have been a positive outcome? Now, here's, this is in fairness to the people that made the decision to pursue the atomic weapons. They weren't taught the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Because if they had been, and had even read this one sentence right here, this one paragraph right here would have got them to stop and think before they pursued this goal. Again, goals that are made impulsively and because of emotions like hate, hate for your enemy, anger against your enemy, revenge against your enemy, or jealousy can result in harm to yourself and to others. Okay? Now, let's read these following articles and let's answer the questions that follow. Okay, um, let's start with Three Boys Plot to Kill. This is from 1998. It says, three sixth grade boys had a hit list and were plotting to kill fellow classmates in a sniper attack on the last day of school, police in St. Charles, Missouri say. And that's from abcnews.go.com. Now, it doesn't say how old the boys are. No, they're sixth grade, so they can't be older than, what, 10, 11? And they're, they've got a hit list, which means that they had a list of people that they were targeting, and they were plotting to kill them in a sniper attack. I don't know if that meant one of them was going to get up on the roof with a gun and start sniping them out in the playground or whatever was taking place. But this was a plot. That means it was a scheme. It was a plan. It was something that they were uh, that these three boys talked about for some length of time at least, and they had it in their mind. They had malice forethought in their mind to take the life of other people. Is that a positive goal? Well, I don't know. Can we show the next slide? This is a picture of, uh, his name is General, General Leslie R. Groves. He is the man that was responsible for heading the Manhattan Project, okay, along with J.R. Oppenheimer, but he was the military commander that was in charge of the uh, Manhattan Project. He was also the man that built the Pentagon, okay? This man was a busy man back then, okay, because this all occurred in the 40s, okay, in the early 40s, the first five years of the 40s. This man built the Pentagon. Uh, he was in charge of the Manhattan Project. 
this these were huge, huge undertakings. This picture right here shows General Groves just a couple weeks before the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This is a propaganda picture that was put out to scare the Japanese, particularly the Emperor of Japan. Okay? And it shows him looking at a world map, specifically in the Pacific Ocean area there. In the, uh, and he's looking, if you notice his eyes, are looking at the island of Japan. Okay? He's not saying he's going to do anything to Japan. He's not saying anything. He's just showing, hey, I got my eye on this island right here. Okay? In other words, he's plotting, him and his friends, him and the Allies were plotting to bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki with a new weapon that they just developed called the atomic weapon. This is the plot. Now, was this plot positive? Because, because after all, you know, they, they kind of make you think that war is acceptable if it's your enemies and, you know, you got to destroy your enemies. Is this a positive thing to, to do here? Is this a positive plot? Versus the three boys plot to kill, to kill uh, on their hit list at school? Is it, it, is, does it make it better to plot to take uh, a nation out? Because they're your enemy? Well, if you use the, the guidelines above, it says, if you set goals that are made impulsively and because of emotions like hate, anger, revenge, or jealousy, it's going to result in harm to yourself and other people. It's not a positive thing, okay? Whether you're plotting to kill classmates or you're plotting to kill people of an, in another country, it's not a positive thing. But we'll, we'll, we'll look at the question here in a minute, too. Here's the second article on uh, page 113. It says, Tommy's bumper sticker. Um, it says, Tommy Ty decided at the tender age of four that he wanted to bring peace to the world. By the age of six, he had managed to borrow $454 from the Children's Free Enterprise Bank to produce 1,000 bumper stickers that say, Peace, please do it for us kids. Tommy made nine goals for himself. Okay, now this is pretty interesting. This, is a, this goes to show you that, you know, you can be very young and be practicing the peaceful solution and set goals. You, don't, you can be at any age to set goals. Okay, he's old enough to read. He was probably seeing, he was probably watching the world news with his parents. His parents probably in, encouraged him to watch world news and to stay up with current events, which is great. All parents should do that. We should do that. I, I'm i really amazed at the number of students that I talk to in the Peaceful Solution, and I ask them, you know, do you know about this? Do you know about what's going on here in the world? Because, you know, we like to use current events in our classes to keep people, you know, to help them to see how, you know, these uh, these these peaceful solution teachings apply in everyday life. And I'm surprised how many of them don't know a thing. They don't even know who the vice president is. <laughs> they don't know who the secretary of state is. Some of them don't even know who the mayor of their own town is. Some people don't even know. They, they just have no clue about anything outside of school and, you know, their friends and, and home life. But I would encourage you, you know, really need to stay you don't have to, and I, I get pretty depressed myself if I got to watch the news for any length of time, but you should at least, you know, uh, you know, scroll through the headlines or something to see what's going on in the world to try to keep up with, because there's a lot of things going on that we need to know about. But anyway, Tommy here, he was only four years old, and then he, by the age of six, he had borrowed $454 to make, he had a plan, Okay. Uh, his first goal, it says, make a plan for a loan, uh, which he did, and he got the loan of $454. Number two, have a bumper sticker printed. And the bumper sticker said, peace, please do it for us kids. The third goal was get addresses of leaders, you know, uh, whether it was local leaders, world leaders, uh, international leaders. You know, I don't, I don't know who, who he... Uh, well, it actually says in number four, 
write a letter to all the presidents and leaders of other countries and send them a free bumper sticker. I don't know about you, but if I was a world leader and I got a and I got a a, a bumper sticker that said "Peace, please do it for us kids" from a four-year-old or six-year-old, I think I'd be pretty touched. You know, I think I'd be I think that would make a very 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 big impact in my life if I had you know, the positive character trait of compassion or the positive character trait of, uh, you know, uh, responsibility or, you know, if I had any kind of heart at all, if I got that from a child, I w- I'd be pretty touched by that. I mean, I would make a big, 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 big impact in my life. And I'm sure it would a lot of world leaders if they got that. So that would make a huge difference. Notice, you know, Tommy... Tommy didn't write a letter that was laced with anthrax, right? He didn't send a letter laced with anthrax or threats of war, you know. If you don't do what I want you to do, well, you guys can all just, you know, go jump off a cliff. You know, there wasn't any threats. There wasn't any, you know, put downs or anything like that. He just wrote a letter and he had a very simple plan here. And it's very, to me, this is, this is a great plan that Tommy came up with. Let me, speaking of 454, can I show that he had $454? Can I show that next slide? Now, you know, this, is a, this was a letter sent just recently. This is a, this is a, uh, uh, a letter to, uh, this, it wasn't an actual letter. What it was is a Newsweek article. That's how they operate. You know, what they do is they show what their plans are to try to put fear into other nations. You know, like a president of one nation will show that, hey, we're doing a missile launch here. Look at this missile that we've got. Look at this big missile we've got. And it can carry a big payload of nuclear warheads. And they'll they'll put some kind of article out there. Russia says tensions with U.S. getting close to dangerous confrontation, which is a message that they're sending out that Russia is sending to America saying, hey, you're getting a little bit too close over here playing around in the Black Sea. I think that's what was going on. America was doing war games with some other allies in the Black Sea. And it makes Russia nervous because Russia, you know, is right there by the Black Sea. And they're thinking, hey, are these people planning on attacking us? Well, just in case they are planning on attacking us, we better put a letter out there, not like Tommy did with the $454 and the bumper stickers. What we'll do is we'll get a ship that says 454 and we'll launch some rockets off it and let these guys know what we've what they got coming if they mess with us. Is this going to achieve peace? Is that going to make uh, the world leaders uh, calm and peaceful? No, I think it's going to cause a lot of belligerence, anger, uh, probably thoughts of retaliation. Oh, yeah, they think they got that. Well, we got something, too, you know, and it's just going to be more retaliation back and forth, more threats. And it's going to keep building and building and building. And eventually it could provoke these. The fear could be provoked in these leaders where somebody actually pushes a button for real. Remember, they're not just sitting on those bombs that they created for no reason. Okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and continue here. Let's go to the next page. Um, On page 114, it says, how do the goals in the first article differ from the ones in the second article? Well, in the first article, the three boys, the three boys goals were negative. But the second one was positive. And how do we know that? Well, the first one, uh, the three boys were plotting to kill. Is killing ever positive? No, absolutely not. It could never be positive because remember the word moral, the word moral means not to bring harm to yourself, your neighbor, or the environment. So it could never be moral to kill somebody, okay? Uh, I know, you know, The thought is that, well, there's times that killing is acceptable, but if you're following the peaceful solution and you're listening to what it's saying here, it's telling you that life is valuable, yours and everyone else's, and it is not acceptable to bring harm, to inflict pain and suffering, harm, or kill anybody for any reason, okay? So 
the three boys goals was negative if they had a problem with these children in their class instead of plotting to kill them what they should have done is gone done what the other gentleman did uh the example in the positive goal of john seeking to find a peaceful way to handle this problem by speaking to his parents or guidance counselor about how to handle it that's what they should have done but the second goal was positive because tommy you know he had a plan to bring peace okay but his plan didn't involve weapons force any kind of threats or intimidation nothing like that what he planned was this little boy at four years old uh wanted to bring peace and by the time he was six he made 454 dollars to print some bumper stickers out to send out to all the leaders all over the world to try to get them to you know find a peaceful solution to their problems you know the only thing that tommy could have used there along with those bumper stickers was one of our peaceful solution character education program uh, lunch kits where it says uh what's for lunch the peaceful solution character education program we could have put tommy's bumper sticker in there along with our lunch kit and you know with our sample material of the peaceful solution to all these world leaders you know and, and it really would have complimented what tommy was doing i sure like to meet tommy someday that's a really great uh, article there a really 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 impressive young man okay the second question on page 114 it says identify the principles in each of the articles and determine whether they are immoral or moral so it says in the first article the three boys had no regard for the value of life there they therefore exhibited immoral principles remember moral means you have regard for human life remember page eight of the character unit a person that's moral has regard for human life they recognize that all people have the right the right to live in peace safety and security without threat to their uh, mental health their physical health etc they shouldn't even be threatened with any kind of uh with any kind of harm nobody should even be threatened with words you know it doesn't matter if we ever pick up a weapon or 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 anything like that what, what we if we use words that harm people that bring harm to them emotionally then then that's just as bad and sometimes can be even worse so they exhibited immoral principles in the second article now tommy's goal was to bring about world peace his goal showed value for life and was therefore moral okay and was therefore moral remember he didn't want to bring harm to anybody he just wants to live in a world free of nuclear weapons free of the threat of destruction free of you know uh this radioactive golden calf you know that they created it's holding all its global inhabitants captive everybody's like a prisoner waiting for that bomb to go off they're all waiting for the what was that called the doomsday clock to hit midnight everybody's waiting for it no well, not everybody some people aren't even thinking about it okay some people it's going to take them by surprise if, when it does occur um we're we're hoping that it doesn't occur we're trying to we're trying to get this message out to everybody that we can and we need your help desperately you know to get this peaceful solution you know you could take it like tommy did you can you can you can actually uh tommy uh his bumper sticker campaign is actually quite uh quite a, a great motivator you know if this little boy can do it you know why can't we do it why can't you do it why can't i do it why can't we get out there and start a campaign on our own I know some men right now that we teach the peaceful solution character education program to in a, in a prison in Virginia. They're actually they've been writing letters to all of their all of the uh, uh, state senators in Virginia, the Congress people in Virginia. They've been writing letters to uh, Washington D.C. to people in D.C. right next door to Virginia there. Uh, about the peaceful solution character education program that they're learning as prisoners and how it's made a big change in their life and some of these guys they've been in there for 20 25 years one of them 33 years just recently got released okay uh, 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 a prisoner that was learning the peaceful solution character education program these guys don't make any money 
in that prison. They they get very little money uh, for for you know from family or you know whatever friends they might still have out there in the free world, and they were taking their own little bit of money that they had and they were buying stamps because those letters weren't free that they mailed out. And they were mailing these letters. They had a letter writing campaign to everybody that they could reach, you know, in, in, in government, uh, in the political field there, to try to teach them about the peaceful solution and show them how beneficial it is. You know, if they can do it, what's our excuse? <laughs> you know, uh, we're talking about prisoners, you know, but, but they're able to reach outside those walls with the peaceful solution in a letter writing campaign, just like Tommy uh, in his in his campaign to bring world peace. Okay, so let's look at page 115 now. It says, discuss the illustration and the consequences of each goal shown. And it's talking about this illustration here with the boy um, um, laying in the grass, and he's thinking, he's got a big thought cloud over his head, uh, and he has in one in one part it shows him studying. In another uh, part of that thought cloud, it shows him. It looks like he's in a science lab. And the third part of the thought cloud has it looks like he's married. He has a he has a wife, and she's holding their little baby. So he's probably thinking about having a family. Okay, so it's telling us think positive, be positive, make positive goals. So. Um, what benefit can they become to themselves and others? How can this young boy right here become a benefit to himself and others by studying? By studying. Well, I think it just depends on what he's studying, right? Because studying in itself is not going to make you a positive person. Okay? It's not going to it's not going to guarantee that you become a moral person. It's not going to guarantee that you're practicing the peaceful solution just because you're studying. Remember, knowledge is power. We learned that in the peaceful solution. Knowledge is power. But you know, what kind of knowledge are we feeding ourselves? Now, if he's if he's learning about you know, building, he's learning about carpentry, he's learning about plumbing, he's learning about electric, he's learning about uh, some kind of social skill, you know, that will help other people. He's learning to, he's learning to become a doctor or he's learning some kind of something. If he's studying something with the goal of helping others or serving others and becoming the best person that he can be, then studying by, is a great thing. And, you know, in the Peaceful Solution, if you want to be a Peaceful Solution instructor, you really need to know as much as you can about a lot of different things, a lot of different areas. Because the peaceful the peaceful solution covers all aspects of life. Okay, so you, you really need to know all you can about all you can know. You you need to really try to figure out and and find out. And remember, get educated, get all the facts, but make sure those facts are correct or true, and then hold on to what's true. You know, and uh, so studying is a great thing. Studying is going to get you. It's going to help you to achieve your positive goals in life and your purpose. It's going to help you to do that if you're studying something that's positive. Now, on the other hand, if you're studying, uh, can you show this next slide? What if you're studying these books, Getting Even, The Complete Book of Dirty Tricks? What if you're studying that book when you're a teenager? Or what if you're studying the Marijuana Grow Bible and learning how to grow marijuana by yourself at home? Is that something positive? Getting even, growing marijuana, is that something you should be studying? Remember I said, if you're studying something that's negative, okay, uh, then that's the results you're gonna get. But if you're thinking positive and you're studying positive things, of course, that's a great thing. Let's look at the, or let's think of the, not the next slide, don't look at the next slide. Let's uh, go ahead and take that slide down before anybody gets ideas. And, uh. This second part of the thought cloud, it shows a man in a science lab, okay? So let's, he's probably thinking, hey, I don't think, I'd like to study to be a scientist one day. Now, is there anything wrong with being a scientist? 
No, scientists have made some pretty great discoveries, and and you know, like the light bulb, et cetera. You know, we wouldn't have, uh, we wouldn't have this television right here, you know, or this light over my head where I can see this book, you know, if we didn't have somebody that invented the light bulbs, because even the screen that you're watching right now is just a bunch of LED lights, okay. So all these things, you know, these things are beneficial. And scientists, people that do research, they came up with these things. They came up with a lot of positive things that are very helpful. So if he's studying to become, you know, a scientist with the thought of helping others and the thought of uh, br making some kind of discovery that's going to bring some kind of advantage and benefit to other people's lives, great. You know, we're all for it. That's what the Peaceful Solution is all about, is positive growth and development, not only in his own life, but helping bring it to the world, right? But what if he's, let's go to the next slide. What if he was, what if he was uh, wanting to be a scientist so he could splice mice genes and mustard greens? You know, he could splice the genes of mice and mustard greens. Uh, you know, take, well, or what if he could, what if his plan was to take mice genes and put them in the mustard greens to make the mustard greens more fluffy and more uh, delightful to look at? Uh, would that be a positive thing? No. Splicing genes of mice and mustard greens creates flowers resistant to honeybees. You see that honeybee there getting ready to land on that flower to suck the nectar out of that flower? You know, when we genetically modify things, as we're going to find out in the next book, The Peaceful Solution Self-Control, which we'll get to one day, uh, we can actually be bringing harm to the bees. Because there's things inside that plant that's killing the honeybees. You know, we're losing a lot of, we're, us, we're losing millions and millions and millions of bees. Okay, they're dying from what's inside of that plant that was genetically modified and put there. Uh, of course, did anybody stop and think? Remember, go back to page 113 at the top where it says, you know, uh, when they did these kind of things, you know, they were thinking to themselves, you know, we don't want insects, you know, to ruin the plant. So what we need to do is we need to put the insecticide inside the plant so we don't have to spray the plant on the outside with insecticide. We'll go ahead and we'll just put the insect in insecticide internally into the plant. Well, it's a, it's a great goal to keep the bugs from eating the plants and ruining your crops and stuff. But, you know, did you stop and think that if you put the insecticide inside the plant, what it's going to do to the people that eat it and the bees that come to pollinate? <laughs> did we think that, you know, the bees don't see the, they don't see any kind of danger, you know, because the danger is on the inside. It's genetic. It's genetically modified. So the bee you know, gets the nectar and uh, the bee ends up dying, you know, from, from what's inside that plant or that flower. And we need the bees. Come on, we need the bees. They pollinate all the crops. Without bees, we would all be, I think, was it Einstein that said? Uh, uh, mankind would die out if the bees weren't here. So we need the bees, okay? We need to, we need to stop and think about what we're doing and we need to to get educated about what we're doing. So there wouldn't be anything wrong with the boy wanting to be a scientist, but he's, if he's going to be splicing genes of mice and mustard greens and creating flowers resistant to honeybees, then we got a problem. It's called cross-contamination. We don't need that. What we need is scientists that are bringing benefit to the world, that are bringing benefit to society, that are bringing benefit to themselves and other people, things that build and not destroy, things that make life uh, make life more enjoyable, more advantageous, more healthy, okay? Not make people sick, not make animals sick, not make the bees sick, not make anything sick, okay? So certainly it's a positive goal and it would be positive if they pursue that goal in a positive way with a peaceful solution. That's why if you're going to study and if you're going to be a scientist, you've really got to add the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program to your curriculum because no education is complete without 
moral character education. Yes, we need reading. Yes, we need writing. Yes, we need science. Yes, we need social studies. But you've got to put moral character education as taught in the Peaceful Solution in the mix. Without it, you know, you could be a, a really, really smart in math, or you could be a really great, uh, yeah, you could be a really great mathematician, but you could also uh, be stealing from people using near math. <laughs> you could be an accountant that likes to steal from, uh, you know, the person that you're doing accounting for. Okay, so you've got to have the moral education so you won't bring harm to other people. Okay, that's why it's so important. So you can learn the benefit of moral choices and using morality and self-control in all your decision making. Now, finally, in this thought cloud on page 115, it shows him uh, with his wife and his, and his baby. Is wanting to start a family a positive goal? Absolutely. Okay. If it's pursued the right way, it won't bring harm to anybody. Okay, if if he if he grows up, and he and he, you know, if he uses the guidelines in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program that he'll learn about choosing a mate. First of all, what he should be thinking about is, you know, what kind of character does this woman have? Okay, you know, what what kind of character does she have? Because if I want to start a family, then I want to make sure that I that I that I find a woman that has similar goals and purpose in life that I have that's positive not something negative because if you hook up with somebody that's got negative goals when you have positive goals that's not going to work out well for you so you want to make sure that the person that you're pursuing has positive moral character in mind as well that's something that she has on her list of achievements in life so there wouldn't be anything wrong with getting married and starting a family if it's done the right way. Remember, uh, not not uh, uh, doing things the way uh, most people do, just jumping right into something, but getting to know that person through conversation and through observation over a long period of time. Uh, not getting to know them the way Hollywood teaches people to get to know people, but getting to know them the right way and not putting your hands on anyone, not doing any of those things, being respectful, getting to know them through conversation and observation. There wouldn't be anything wrong with him getting married in that fashion. But what if, let's show the next slide. What if he chose to do it the way uh, most people do it that haven't been taught the peaceful solution? And let's say that he has, he has, uh, uh, he picks up this girl and does things with her before they're even married and causes birth defects in their children and let's say they even ha they have a family and they end up having children but the child has birth defects because of some of the poor choices that the parents made okay is that going to be something positive absolutely not what if he decides that uh, hey I want to start a family so I'm going to steal my neighbor's wife I like my neighbor's wife I can't find anybody else out here I'm gonna go ahead and t I, I, but I do like my neighbor's wife I'm gonna take my neighbor's wife is that gonna be a great decision most people don't even know this but there's actually lo a law against in seven states there's laws against uh, I can't remember the name of the law but it's it's stealing affection it, it's it's when you steal someone else's wife <laughs> you can actually be charged with that in, in this case, this man in uh, North Carolina, this is just a couple years ago, it says Pitt County man wins $750,000 judgment against man for stealing his wife. This man actually sued a man for stealing his wife and won a judgment of $750,000. So not only is it against the law <laughs> where you can actually uh, have to pay out of your pocket, it's also not a moral thing to do to steal, is it? You know, whether you're stealing a candy bar, or whether you're stealing a, uh, a bicycle, or you're stealing someone's wife, or you're stealing someone's family member, okay? That's not, it's not something positive. It shouldn't be pursued in that way, okay? It has to be pursued using morality and self-control, as we learned back on page uh, 113. Morality and self-control has to be used when you set goals. If you'll do that, if you'll use morality and self-control in all your goal setting, 
You'll always set positive, achievable goals that won't bring harm to yourself, your neighbor, or anyone else. And uh, that's all the time I have tonight. I think the next class is on, what, the 21st? Sunday? Sunday, um, uh, 1121 at 5.30 p.m. Sunday at uh, 5.30, 11.21, okay, 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's been great uh, with you tonight, and I hope to see you again next time. Remember, keep practicing the peaceful solution and keep tuning in, and our next teacher should be Katan. Thank you very much.